I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my creative healing course is filled with hours of exclusive content. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're gonna to be talking about why they come back after you distance. You know, relationships can be incredibly scary at times because our partners can often want different things. And we don't understand that, especially in the beginning when things seem perfect and amazing and you don't want any space from each other because you're just so excited to meet somebody new. But it's often not long after that that people's needs become very different. And this goes for whether you're dating somebody new or if you're in a breakup. Oftentimes, if you allow that person space and some distance to grow, they come back again. Absolutely. I see it all the time, and it's a very interesting thing, but I really believe it's biologically hardwired into us to want to feel safety with our connections, and, you know, we all grew up in different homes and environments, and so we have different relationships with our caregivers, so we want different amounts of closeness. Mm -hmm. So understanding this is absolutely key to having a healthy relationship. Right. We're gonna talk about this today, but you know, I wanted to say up front that, you know, first of all, we aren't often aware of this. And Margaret, you even remember the, the time I had that aha moment so many years ago. Yes, I do. Where it, we were in a session and I said, space, I, I'm, not, I'm not grasping my head around why people need space. Why would anyone want space? Right. But it was a huge uh, leap for me to yes, understand it that it's a big part of a dynamic. When you can grasp that concept that the people that you date may want less space than you or more space, or more space than you, it, it's right. going to change the relationship. But we're going to look closer at that because how you behave in those moments is absolutely critical, right? So first of all, I wanted to talk about how a lot of times our partners don't even tell us they need space, no. mm -hmm. right? Margaret, what do you think about that? They don't tell us, and well, if you're talking about, and of course the most common combination of relationships we see is anxious and avoidant. Yes. And I think it's entirely possible that avoidants who don't spend a lot of time thinking about themselves um, probably don't know they need it. And anxious people who want to be with you all the time don't know why in heaven's name you'd need it, even mm -hmm. if you figure out you do, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, but uh, it's, it's healthy for you to have an understanding and expect that whoever you're dating is going to want some alone time and some personal time, and you don't want to get upset and offended when they do. Yeah, because a lot it's of people... perfectly okay. Mm -hmm. If you're the anxious party and you'd like to be in this person's back pocket 24-7, you have to understand that that might not be comfortable for them. Mm-hmm. And I recommend often that people assess and ask each other, what kind of togetherness and what kind of distance do you need? What works for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, because they have their own needs, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, there are going to be times that they may be uncertain about the relationship. And, you know, like sometimes after or around a breakup, people say they need space. Mm -hmm. And it's very gut-wrenching when somebody tells that to you, and it's terrifying. Yeah. Really, it's truly right. terrifying. Mm -hmm. And your body is completely overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, 
it's healthy for people to question a relationship at absolutely. times. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And to need space to think about yeah. things. Yeah. Absolutely. And if you guys can uh, be on the same page, because maybe one of you has a major deal breaker, or maybe one of you wants kids and the other one doesn't want to have kids, or one of you wants to move to Africa and the other one doesn't. You know, there are all kinds of reasons that people uh, can reflect upon a relationship and decide whether or not it's going to work for them. Mm -hmm. But it's terrifying, especially for the anxious people. Right. And it's hard not to take that as a complete rejection. Mm -hmm. Yes, personal. Yeah. It right. feels very personal. Yeah. Well, you mean you need space. Mm -hmm. For me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you want to understand that they have those needs, and you want to be able to allow them the time and the freedom to decide. Because they chose you for a reason. And... You know, if you allow them that space to be on their own, oftentimes they do come back because they realize all the good qualities that you had mm -hmm. or the relationship had. And something you might not consider is that if you're the anxious person in the relationship, that space might be beneficial for you as well. Good point. Absolutely. But anxious people don't think like that. Mm -mm. No. Until but invited to by the therapist. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things I wanted to talk about is that, you know, in the beginning, when we first start dating somebody, that we can get just totally consumed by that new relationship, right? Mm -hmm. But relationships aren't our only priority in life. Yeah. We have careers, we have family, we have kids um, and friends, uh, we have hobbies, mm -hmm. and all of those things can interfere with how much time we can spend with another partner. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can tell you with my own parents, my dad used to like to play basketball or softball. And when he did, my mom would lock herself in the bathroom and cry mm -hmm. about, don't right. leave me. And, and you know. He was coming back. Yeah. But, it, but he started feeling suffocated because she would be dramatic and start a fight about that. As a kid, I didn't understand that. But now hearing as an adult from my dad, his side of it, it, it makes sense. Yes. You know, if only she had said, go, have a good time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. play softball, go play yeah, basketball. Mm -hmm. I'll see you tonight. Uh, and, you know, understood that they may have not had a divorce. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's exploring those things and looking at my own life and my parents' relationship. I was able to navigate some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. When we have to take care of those other things, friends, jobs, you know, kids, family, whatever, we want our partner to be understanding of that, right? Like, imagine you had somebody that you were dating and they were not understanding that you had to go to work mm -hmm. or you had something mm -hmm. to do with your mom. Mm -hmm. Like, how would you feel in that situation? I mean, you would feel guilty. You would feel like yes. you're hurting somebody but not sure why. And space is a natural part of life, space and closeness, just as much as rainy days and just as much as sunny days. You need a balance. And it's almost like a dance in a relationship between the space and closeness and figuring out what works for you. Um, but to pressure the other person into feeling like they, they can't have their own autonomy and their own freedom, that's not going to benefit you in the end. And not, do you really? Not ever. Yeah. No. Yeah. <clears throat> and do you really want to be with a person because you're pressuring them to be there? Or would you rather them want to be with you and have that intentional time with you rather than feeling like they have to? Yeah. Because ultimately it makes them not want to be around you. Mm -hmm. Right. If if they have to go to work or take care of some of these obligations and they have to put the relationship on the back burner a little bit for, you know, sometimes and you can't handle that, it's just gonna frustrate them too. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get angry. Right. Mm -hmm. One end of the spectrum would be a fear of abandonment, and the opposite end would be a fear of being smothered. And that can often go right back to your family of origin and your experiences as a child, as well as whatever's going on in your adult life. Yes, mm -hmm. and allowing that person space to take care of those things oh. makes them want to come back naturally when they have the time to do it. Right, because imagine if you pressure that other person, now they're stressed that they haven't gotten what they needed done at work, they're stressed because they haven't had that social time with their friends, and they're going to come to you in a different mood and a different attitude 
than had you just said, have your time. And you're probably not going to know why. They're in a bad mood. And not only that, like if you want to go out and do something that you enjoy and somebody holds you back from it, you just get angry at them. Sure. Like, I want to do this thing. Just let me go do this thing. Right. I want to go bowling tonight or I want to go with my friends tonight out of this movie. And if they're holding you back, you're just going to get, you know, annoyed at it. Right. And you're not going to want to be around them. Right. If they're wanting out to do something fun and you're trying to restrict them, that just makes them want to go out even more. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, right. get me out of here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right. So it's important to be aware. That's the key. Being able to give and take space in a relationship is absolutely critical and healthy. It really is critical. Because, yeah. I mean, it can mean survival of a relationship or failure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And a lot of times when you do something, you may spend time with a friend of yours that brings out certain Doing, qualities. Yep. Sure. And then you come home and you kind of feel a little bit more like yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. And remember, it's normal to depend on your partner at times. We're not saying that you shouldn't depend on them or you, there won't be times where you will need them a little bit more than other times. But we're talking about when you're pressuring the other person out of your own anxiety that you're not able to soothe yourself. You want to give them that time and space to wonder about you, to think about you, to, to question what's going on in your life, and that brings excitement along with it. And on the most basic level, this is really about respect and respecting your partner's boundaries for what they need and the space that they need and showing that you're able to have that emotional self-control in the relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And in regards to like um, when a, a situation maybe wind up in a breakup that the person is so unhappy with the way you've been, um, Allowing them the space and the distance that occurs when maybe you haven't talked in some several days or weeks, even months, if there's a breakup involved, mm -hmm. it does make them reflect mm -hmm. on things, process things, and oftentimes they do realize that they do miss you and do miss that relationship. That's right. But when they ask for that space, a lot of times we get manipulative. We try and make them feel bad about it, feel guilty, and that only pushes them away further. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, and then there's the mixed message. Go ahead, go out with your friends, have a good time, and I'm going to call you five times while you're gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's really attractive if you can't allow your, your partner to go off and mm -hmm. uh, do mm -hmm. something. Yeah, without you. And, yeah, and like in the Creative Healing Course, we have a cartoon that deals with the cat, one of the characters getting upset when his partner was out, mm -hmm. right? And then yeah. he gets his insecurities come out. That's mm -hmm. one really funny cartoon, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> so and so sorry. Right. <laughs> you know who, who it is, Margaret. <laughs> um, but you know, you you can't continue to act this way in your relationships because it's really unattractive and it's it's tiring, mm -hmm. right? right? It's tiring if somebody just wants to go bowling, you know, or in a you know, softball league a couple days a week, and you're fighting them, and they don't want to come home. And they're going to be angry eventually. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Time and time again, we see if you give your partner the opportunity and the space to miss you, they often want to repair things, especially if you made changes during that time, and that's a big point. Mm -hmm. And if you find yourself in a breakup and you're wanting to reattract that ex, remember that that distance shows that you have value, that you have important things to do, that you're your own person with your own interests and that they are not consuming your entire life, that you have an identity apart from them and that's going to be attractive for them. And at the same time, if they're experiencing the breakup as well, they're in a grief process and with grief, you're really going to need that space to think about what happened, to process, to be able to really recognize what it is that they have lost. And I know, Margaret, you talk quite a bit about the grief process and how that can be interrupted and not work in your favor. One of the reasons we suggest no contact, because I think it sounds cruel to people at the beginning, is that you need to let the partner who broke up with you have their space to do their grief process. And we assure people all of the time that they do do a grief process. Okay, they can't forget about you in 20 minutes. No. 
And if you keep having contact after you're broken up, it stops the grief process, and then it has to stop and start and stop and start. And that's not what you want. Mm -hmm. And it also irritates them. Yes, it does. I talked to a girl, I think it was last week, that I was trying very hard to make it clear to her she had reached out to her ex 10 times in a row, and he ignored her 10 times in a row. And I could see her anxiety was through the roof, and she just didn't understand why this whole relationship fell apart. I could see it within five minutes of, of talking to her. Yeah. But I'm like, mm -hmm. he has ignored you 10 times in a row. Do not reach out to him again. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, I think the guy really did care about her, but her behavior was so much, it was so overwhelming. He was probably totally overwhelmed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And in the case that they do come back, you want to show them that you've changed and that you're able to give them that space that they wanted throughout the relationship. If they come back into the relationship with you, expecting things to be different, expecting them to be able to go out and, and live their independent life together with you, the term that we call interdependence, then that's really going to be showing of the future and the health of that relationship. So you want to keep that in mind that these behaviors are things that you can work on for your future relationship and that space is natural and normal in a relationship. And you got to focus on becoming more secure. And that's why we tell you guys all the time when you do the work, it's going to pay off one way or the other, where they come back or if you start dating other people because you can't control them. You can't make them do anything that they don't want to do. Right. And it's hard to accept that. But what you can do is put yourself in the best position that you can by doing the real work. Mm -hmm. And so many of you are only focused on no contact or manipulative things like a good reminder text or the handwritten letter which more often than anything make the situation worse because it's more intrusive behaviors mm -hmm. and it's not showing your value. You want to show somebody your value mm -hmm. and that you respect yourself and you love yourself. There's nothing more powerful than attachment. I, I don't believe that there is. I don't believe that there is either. And people do not forget about you. They reconsider. They definitely revisit the idea of getting back with you. Yes, they do but you have to make changes and figure out why that relationship didn't work. And that is a big thing that Margaret and I will help you do. Mm -hmm. And again, reduced almost to its lowest terms. If you're in a dating relationship with someone, either of you has the right to end it at any time. For any reason. For any reason, mm -hmm. right. Whether it seems trivial to you or not. Yeah. Right. And that's just one of the challenges that comes along with life and dating and the realities of it. It's not fair, but in a way it is fair because, you know, if you wanted to leave somebody, uh, you know, you should have the right to do it for whatever reason you felt was right for you, mm -hmm. right? So that just comes with getting to a really healthy place and doing the work will help you get there. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we are here to help guide you, figure out what to do in your specific situation, and assess what happened, how you can repair it. That's what we do all day, every day. All day, every day. All you have to do to get our help is sign up on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skypes. Margaret does Skype coaching. If you feel that I can be helpful to you, please sign up. And eventually, Coach Vicki will do coaching with us too, but right now she's still training. I will be here. That's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, Click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.